you are on the next level. This is the beautiful truth, where the expression is still free. And you are very welcome. This is The Beautiful Truth on BreakForNews.com with Finton Dunn reporting on the 22nd of March 2020 at 10 Eastern, reporting to you with great news in the fight against this COVID-19 outbreak. Terrific news of research which is pointing us towards the underlying reason why we're having such huge mortality and holds out the promise to us of potentially cutting the mortality rate from this outbreak significantly because of finally understanding the answer to questions really which have puzzled people since the beginning of this outbreak. I've felt that myself and and been digging to try and get answers to these questions and I wouldn't be the only one to whom these issues would be apparent. You see, when a disease has specific unusual characteristics, it often gives you a mechanism to finding out how it's doing that. So it has been a factor in this that COVID-19 is hardly affecting children at all. And by the same token, it's disproportionately affecting the elderly. And in particular, it's affecting those who have got heart problems of some kind or blood pressure problems or other cardio related issues. So why is it, has it got that profile? Has always been a question. And the answer, I believe, is in sight. It's been looming for the last few days, and now I believe that evidence is crystallizing into place, which shows that we do now understand what's driving it. The evidence has come out in the media in recent days. Everything I'm going to say to you here now, by the way, is comes from either qualified medical doctors or professors of medicine, or in one case, the head of the Infectious Diseases Unit of the National Institute of Health in the United States. I'm only going to quote to you top-level medical people. No rogue individuals. This is peer-reviewed professional medicine. And the outcome of the investigations indicate that the key question we need to ask ourselves to solve this is, have you ever heard of a young child being prescribed blood pressure medications? That's a question posed by one doctor. I'll bring you the details on that as we go. Well, well, I haven't. Have you as anybody? What could have that have to do with this? Why would that be an important question to ask? Well, perhaps because of what we're seeing coming out in data. Let me show you some of this stuff that's been coming out in media in the last uh, few days. Since the middle of last week, when this report came out in the New York Post, Over 99% of coronavirus patients in Italy, was reported, who died had other health problems. Well, yes, we're sort of aware of that, but here it was in black and white, and the confirmation was stark, but most interesting. And let me enlarge that for you. Now, more than 75% of those patients who died reported high blood pressure while a third had diabetes and 33% had heart disease according to the study. Well I have it here. Here it is for you in the original Italian and as you can see here hypertension 76.1% of the patients who died had hypertension. Of course that's not entirely unusual in older patients but nevertheless That's the profile of who is dying and why. Astonishingly, um, two out of, well, there were many patients had three pathologies. Half of them had three pathologies who who died, right? So they had three of these things wrong with them. And the things there that are in that list include um, heart disease, arterial fibrillation, stroke, hypertension, diabetes, dementia, uh, BPCO, which is uh, bronchial pulmonary obstruction, um, cancer in the last five years, liver or renal insufficiencies. And in fact, uh, among people who had none of those, right, none of those, there were only three patients who died in the study 
who had none of those things, who had no pathologies, and who died just because of COVID on its own without any existing diseases. But of those figures, it's this this heart, this uh, blood pressure one here that's of particular interest because it has only been in recent days that this issue was raised with none other than the head of the U.S. Infectious Disease Unit in the NIH, Dr. Anthony Fauci, the little guy that you see standing beside Trump at those press conferences. And uh, in a discussion with uh, the editor-in-chief of JAMA, the Journal of the American Medical Association, uh, on the 18th of March, Wednesday last week, he said about this issue of whether blood pressure and blood pressure drugs could be implicated in this. He said, if you look at the mechanistic rationale for concern, it's there. Although this point, it's an extrapolation. He said, we really need to get data. We need to get data fast. Well, we have the data, Anthony. Have the data now. Came out the very day you were speaking, and it shows 76% of those who died uh, had blood pressure issues. And that means they may have been on a particular kind of drug. As this report in Science Daily, or Science News, by Amy Cunningham. Thank you, Amy, for the report on the 20th of March, two days later, where she reports some of the issues around this question of whether um, there could be a connection between the drugs and the infection. Let me explain why. You see, um, we, your cells have got receptors that poke out on the outside of the cell and allow necessary nutrients to use those receptors as as doorknobs to open and come in. And the new coronavirus is targeting a receptor, which as I say is like a doorknob that sticks out of your, your cells, targeting a receptor called ACE2. When you're on this blood pressure medication, which is a uh, uh, designed to lower your blood pressure, you know, for, for treatment purposes, it causes more of these ACE2 receptors that the virus is using to get in. It's using ACE2 receptors as its doorknob to unlock and get into your cells. And when you're on the medication, it produces, guess how much? Between two and five times more ACE2 receptor expression on the surface of your cells, making you well, making you a lot more infectable and making you a, a lot more susceptible to the ravages of this because these ACE receptors are found in other tissues around the body and they may be found in lung, uh, heart and other tissues. And there's, there's, there's research indicating that that could indeed contribute to the problem. So there it is in stark terms, the potential connection between these drugs and in one, it's called, it's an ARB, uh, is the one with most concern. That's an angiotensin receptor blocker. So you've got drugs which are angiotensin receptor blockers, and angiotensin 2 production is linked to expression of the doorknobs which the SARS CoV 2 virus uses to get in. Now, because of that, a professor in Australia, called uh, uh, Murray Fraser, uh, did a uh, paper in Journal of Hypertension. Again, this is this all peer-reviewed stuff. Came out about, uh, put in about a week ago, March the 11th was the date. Can angiotensin receptor blocking drugs perhaps be harmful in the COVID-19 pandemic? And uh, I'll get into some of that in a moment, but we'll come back to another doctor who's picked up on that research. And he is a guy, this is he here, James Freeman. He's a GP in Australia, in general practice, a great all-round guy. He's done some great stuff previously for patients, including help them get cheaper hep C and HIV drugs as, as in, in a voluntary capacity. And he picked up on this paper by uh, Professor Murray Essler. He believes that uh, Murray Essler is onto the right, uh, asking the right questions. And he's launched a website to go out there and actually ask patients to submit details to him of what medications their elders are on if they have had a diagnosis of this virus in order that he can go and try and check it out. Unfortunately, he has been denied access to the data. He's been denied access to the data by the CDC, in the Chinese CDC. 
so he's going to have to try and collect it himself. And perhaps we can help him collect that data because this would prove what is at the moment a hypothesis. So the theory, and it's a theory so far, but as I say, it so conveniently explains the dynamics of this infection that it may be death theory, which proves to be the one that unlocks the huge mortality rate and reduces it. So he's saying that the uh, ACE inhibitor system, uh, this is connected to the blood pressure, right? Uh, ACE2 is found, he says, at highest concentrations in airways and lungs. It's also the entry vector for the SARS COV2 virus to enter cells. Patients on ARBs, he says, may have a greater risk of COVID-19 due to higher levels of angiotensin II, resulting in higher levels of ACE2 facilitating SARS-CoV-2 to infect cells. Conversely, patients on ACE inhibitors may have some degree of protection due to their absence of angiotensin II and the need for the body to upregulate angiotensin ACE2 ACE production. So, He's going to collect the data and he's set up a website, fixcovid19.com, where he's going to bring that information to us as he collects it. It's just started now. Perhaps you could spread the word about this valuable initiative, which has been taken now by this doctor. And we could gather the data we need to prove this. But I'm going to get into some of the details of uh, the uh, professor's analysis. This is uh, Professor Murray Esler, because I'd like to provide you not with just a warning about certain types of drugs, but also with some of the potential solutions that we could put in place. So this isn't just about, and it certainly isn't about advising anybody to immediately stop taking these uh, A or B drugs, uh, because you need medical advice on the advisability of doing anything with your medication. However, Let's take a look at this paper here now. I'll link to all this stuff in the video uh, notes on YouTube and uh, on breakfornews.com in our COVID-19 thread. Um, so here it is, uh, can angiotensin receptor blocking drugs? And we'll take a look at some of the very interesting part here. So, How might angiotensin receptor blockers increase ACE2 expression? Plasma levels of angiotensin II increase with ARB dosing. Angiotensin II is the known substrate for ACE2, that's the receptor. Perhaps this is a case of substrate availability, increasing the expression of the linked enzyme. This is hypothetical, but could be used as a framework to consider alternative drugs to ARBs during the COVID-19 pandemic. Both ACE1 inhibitors and beta adrenergic adrenergic blockers, that's beta blockers, you probably know them as, uh, reduce plasma concentrations of angiotensin II. So, right, if we reduce angiotensin II, we reduce the expression of the doorknobs and therefore less entry for the virus, right? So, uh, they reduce uh, the... Uh, by reducing the cleavage of angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2. Right? So they prevent angiotensin 2 from being manufactured, and that does the business. And with beta blockers, the mechanism is just to reduce the release of renin from the kidneys, which has the same effect of reducing available angiotensin 2. Right? So this might suggest that these two are potential suitable replacements and preferred because they potentially reduce ACE2 expression. Calcium channel blockers, another hypertensive class mainstay, are neutral concerning angiotensin II availability and potentially suitable. So there he is laying out three classes of drugs, calcium channel blockers, uh, ACE1 inhibitors and beta blockers as alternatives which patients could consider and consider getting off of in case this theory is correct and that what's happening is that these particular drugs are lighting them up like a landing strip for this virus and explains the high mortality which we're seeing in older patients on this kind of medication, perhaps. So what kind of ARBs are there? Here's some of the ARB drugs and here are some of their brand names. They all end in Sartan, Azil Sartan, Candes Sartan, Epro Sartan, etc., and the brand names Adarbi, 
Atakand Teve. You have to imagine having the job of making these names up, Ava Pro. But it does mean that you can actually check these and other A or Bs. Now use Google to help you. That's where I've gotten this. Angiotensin receptor blocker drugs. That's my search term. And uh, there are some of the drugs. And what could you consider shifting to if your medical practitioner advised it was suitable? Some of the ACE inhibitors, for example, to achieve the same uh, hypertension control effect now. Uh, and these all end in April. Fosinopril, lisinopril, catopril, banezopril, and those are the brand names. Zestril, lontensin, latensin are some of the brand names. Or alternatively, some of the beta blocker drugs. Uh, and here they are. Just provide them on screen for you there. Again, beta adrenergic blockers brands so that you can identify those drugs. So those are the keys, folks. Um, we have them in our hand right now. All of the research information that you need to go and do your own research, I will provide to you and you can check these links out. And I hope that we are going to get some response and that it's not just left to brave doctors down in Australia to go off in their own time and start setting up websites just to collect data on the drugs people are on in order to verify that this is what's going on. Hopefully we will get proper medical responses. But as far as I'm concerned, I have really been wondering and wondering and wondering about this epidemic since it started. And I now feel finally I have a handle on it. I do understand what's going on. And I think that uh, the professor and his uh, doctor colleague in Australia are onto it, as are other doctors who are asking questions. And I really wish that we would get more from the uh, medical authorities than what we have had so far. Um, just looking for it there. But the European uh, medical authorities and US medical authorities have, have not responded, I think, quickly enough to the concerns that have been raised about these particular drugs. OK, I'm not going to let up on this. This is just my first dig into this to bring you the great news that we have a breakthrough, which I believe could explain the huge mortality we're seeing. And the only thing that's standing between us and confirming that is access to the data of what kinds of drugs these people are on so that we can begin to look at whether there's a relationship between severity of the disease and the drugs they're on. Meanwhile, I would advise, and I have to advise you, that as a matter of caution, and I'd advise, make this same appeal to your doctor as well, that as a matter of caution, considering that it is not rocket science, that there is a link between angiotensin II levels and ACE expression, I think that we, we can infer that's definitely a possibility, and uh, that ACE2 is the mechanism of entry of this virus, that in, out of an abundance of caution, all doctors and all patients should immediately reconsider if some of the alternative medications available to achieve the same blood pressure control result might be a prudent move at this point in what is an epidemic. If this line of inquiry is right, then it could potentially cut the mortality rate for this epidemic in half. And that would be very significant. Okay, that's it for this edition of The Beautiful Truth. I will be back with more on this and other issues very shortly. And I do hope that you can join me for that. But in the meantime, for BreakForNews.com, this has been Fintan Dunn reporting. Thank you.